What are the three areas that you must focus on when you are hiring a listing agent? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. The three major portions of a presentation that you must listen to a listing agent before you sign them on to sell your home. The first one is the marketing. The marketing is not just something that says we're a big company and it's gonna be in the magazine, it's gonna be on our storefront, it's gonna be on social media, it's gonna be on our newsletter, and they're gonna be talking about all these things. The specific questions that you must ask an agent, or at least someone that is potentially gonna be pitching your home to list, is what are you gonna do? What specific marketing are you gonna to do to get people into my house? That is what marketing is. It is about getting someone to go from the email that there's a new listing to the website where the listing is to making an appointment. Because if you get the email, but you don't click the link, or if you click the link, but you don't actually make an appointment, the marketing has failed. So the questions that you have to ask is, what specific marketing are you gonna be doing around my home? Okay, specific would be, who is the target buyer? Who are you targeting? Is it internationals? Is it local? Is it someone who is looking for an investment property? Is it second homes? Who is this person going to be? If you're marketing the same way to a three bedroom on Park Avenue, as opposed to someone that's a small condo in Soho, those are two totally different groups of people. That's two different promotions. That's two different videos. That's two different photos. That's two different descriptions. So you have to ask specifically what custom marketing campaign are you going to be doing? Number two is the agent. So now the person has entered the home and it's because of the marketing, because it's so good. And now you say, okay, what closes the deal? What makes them make an offer? What makes the enjoyment of walking throughout the property enjoyable? The agent. The agent has to be personal. They have to be fun. They have to be exciting. They have to be someone that knows how to follow up, build rapport, ask about, ask their questions. Two people can walk into a studio in Soho. One person's looking for a second home. One person's looking as a primary home and one person's looking for an investment. Those are three totally different people. If it's a primary, you're talking about the neighborhood. Here are all the local spots. If it's an investment, this is your return. This is why it's easy to rent. This is why you should buy here. And if it's a uh, secondary, where are you gonna be going? Are you coming here for work? Are you coming here because you live in Florida and you wanna go to the local hotspots? Is it because you're, you know, your son is going to NYU and you wanna be close to him? What are the questions? When do you follow up? How often do you follow up? What do you say in the follow up? Is it a phone call? Is it a text message? Is it an email? Is it all of them? And the follow up must include, what is the feedback that you'd like me to give to the owner and did you have any questions about potentially making an offer or having a second viewing? It's short, it's sweet, there's a call to action. The third thing that nobody wants to talk about is the price. We have met this year every single for sale by owner in New York City, at least Manhattan. One of the reasons that they hired an agent over us is because of the price. The agent told them a price that the owner wanted to hear. They hired the agent and they disappointed the owner. The agent was not honest with the owner. The owner heard what they wanted to hear. My home is worth a million dollars. I will go with you because you're telling me that my home is worth a million dollars. Meanwhile, it's worth 895. You have to understand that in this market right now, if you don't have all three dialed in, if you don't have a good marketing, custom marketing campaign to that home, you're not gonna have people in the home. If you don't have someone who is knowingly good at a sales job, which is the real estate agent, a consummate professional, they're not gonna be able to convince the person or be able to provide a great experience, build rapport, ask the, ask the questions. Is this a good home? Is this a good fit for you? And then number three is the price. And the price reflects how serious the owner is. And having represented buyers this year, I can tell you right now, the buyers say one of two things. Number one, they're not serious. They're not looking to sell. Or number two, it's overpriced and I'm not making an offer. In both cases, is the owner serious? Are they actually looking to sell it? It's overpriced. If you get these three things dialed in, I'm telling you right now, you will sell your home and I'll give you one example. I was talking with a buyer. He wanted a place in Soho, $4 million, two bedroom. This, this place came up 
in one of the worst markets in say 15 years. And within 20 days, it had a full cash offer at the ASCII price, $4 million Soho, two bedroom. That's an example. Good marketing, good agent, good price. It worked out, it sold, it's in contract in 20 days. So that means they got an offer after the second open house. In New York City, that's unheard of unless you have good price, good agent, and good marketing. If you guys have any questions, if you're relocating to New York City, we're happy to help. We're happy to talk to anyone. We have dealt with a lot of relocation from California, Florida, international to New York City. Shoot us an email. It's all in the descriptions. If you'd like to subscribe, we have some great content coming out, personalized and honest to the buyers and the sellers that are looking to purchase in New York City. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.